That was a transformer noise, because we're talking about transformers, how they are more than meets the eye. And we're going to solve some problems. We're going to discuss uh, why they're not totally efficient and they lose some power. And then we'll also talk about why when we do send power, we have to transform it or step it up to crazy high voltages to keep from losing a bunch of power as it goes across big countries. So to make a very simple transformer, let's say that I've got a coil with lots of coils right here. And then near it, I've got a coil with not very many. And let's say that this is alternating current, low voltage. And this is going to make a lot of flux lines, like a bar magnet. And it's going to be oscillating, so it's going to be flipping back and forth the North Pole and South Pole. That's going to induce a current and a voltage over here. That's going to make this thing fight it. And it's going to fight it based on Lenz's law. And what's cool is, if this is low voltage, since this has more coils, this is going to be high voltage. However, you've got all this flux lines that are leaking, and they're not going into the coils where they should. You have flux, link, flux leakage, and that sucks. So what you do, in a very clever way, boom, you make an ideal transformer. And to keep the flux lines from leaking, you put a steel donut in the middle. Homer Simpson would love this, except it's steel. You can't eat it. And so let's say, for example, this is your input side now with lots of coils. Maybe you would want to put high voltage into here. And the secondary, which is your output, since it has less coils, you are going to get low voltage. But there's a trade-off as well. Uh, with high voltage, you might have low current here. Uh, even though you get low voltage, now you can get high current. Because what happens is, is that the power input will be equal to the power output, only if it's efficient. Which we will find out. Uh, would be impossible, or very, very, it would happen. The equation to deal with ideal transformers is super easy. If you look at this here, hopefully you know the I is current, your V is voltage, and this N is number of turns of coil. And whenever you see an S, that's standing for your secondary. Or you see a P that's standing for your primary, or your you also write that, or your input. So here's a sample problem. Read this, pause it, and try and solve it. Now, here is what you're doing. You are gonna use part of this equation, say that the number of primaries over the number of secondary turns is equal to the voltage of your primary over the voltage of your secondary. Now you should know that if you're going from 950 turns down to 450, that's going to step down the voltage. And if you solve it and you get something that's higher than 220, you're absolutely crazy. So the way you would then fill in your numbers here is you would put in 950 turns over 450 turns is equaling your primary or input voltage of 220, and then you solve for your secondary. And once you do the algebra, you should get something about 104 volts, and we're going to round that just to about 100. So maybe that's the type of transformer you'd want to use to step down if you're outside the U.S., but you have a U.S. appliance and you need to step it down to somewhere near 110. If you look at any transformer or feel it, you're going to feel that it's hot because it's wasting some power and it's not 100% efficient. The reasons for that, or at least one of them uh, could be the resistance. Within these coils here, there's resistance. They're going to heat up as any wire would. Also, you'd have some flux leakage. This iron donut is going to help bend the field lines from one coil to another, and that'll reduce the leakage, but it won't be perfect. And then another kind of interesting thing is uh, if you look at this core, let's say we've got a side view. When you start 
putting that magnetic field and flipping it around, the free electrons, this is the electrons I'm going to draw, uh, are going to go bananas. And they're going to start running around in these circles uh, in an eddy current. It's similar to when you're piling a canoe and you stick your oar in the water, and the water will make a little eddy current there. And the electrons spin around. That's bad. That's going to cause resistance. So what they do, if you look at any transformer, you'll see that it's not actually solid. They get these stacks of thin metal plates, and they make them into a core. But there's stuff between them. If we look at the side view, it's going to look like this. And they've put an insulator in between them. And what they do is they call that it's laminated. And that uh, doesn't allow them electricity to conduct from one side to the other. And so these electrons aren't allowed to go in that circle and that keeps you from losing as much power. Now, uh, let's deal with power loss. Let's say that you have a power station here, that's where the little smoke's coming out, at 660 megawatts it's putting out, and it's sending power along this transmission cable that is has a resistance of 0.8 ohms to these big towers that kind of look like robots. And you might think that they transmit at really high currents with 20,000 kiloamps. But that would be a lot of power loss. And let me show you why. The equation for power loss uh, is get in a wire. It's going to be I squared over R. And so pause it and solve for what the power loss is in this situation. Hopefully you found that if you have this many amps, which 20,000 is a crazy amount of amps squared times 0 0.8 ohms you are going to end up with 320 megawatts of power lost that is horrible that's almost half of what they're putting out there so what they do then if you look down here the same power station they step it up to 400 kilovolts and that's a crazy high voltage now, pause it and see if you can find the new power loss. Hopefully, you saw that the new current, which is P over V, is going to be your 660 megawatts divided by your 400 kilovolts. And that gives you a much lower, although still pretty big, uh, amps of 1650. Still don't want that going through your body. And then the power lost, same equation, I squared R, and plug in your current, squared, and then you've got your resistance, same as before, of only 0 0.8 ohms, and you are going to get only about 2.2 megawatts, which is much nicer. Still, you'd like to have even less, but hey, it's the best we can do.